when you listen to the media, and I think most of the people get today get science from the media, and it's uh, ripe with uh, climate alarmism. Every story is bent in that direction. Uh, extreme weather, warming, uh, refugee issues, wars. It's all always, and, and the environmental issues with animals, with extinctions, polar bears, all that, always has this very strong global climate alarmism narrative. And uh, most of this is incorrect. And so I feel that we do need a reality check. What are the facts about climate? Well, I've been looking at climate for uh, 40 years in my uh, quaternary geology and climate change course. And I try to keep abreast of what's going on. And uh, if there's any reality about climate, it's that it's always changing. And so from a geological perspective, we've seen dramatic shifts in climate regionally, globally, all the rest. So we as geologists are used to this. But we can see this on a decadal scale as well because things shift. We're not talking about plate tectonics at that time scale. We're talking about ocean currents. We're talking about solar activity. And these things change climate. Uh, El Nino, uh, the Pacific decadal oscillation, all these things shift and they affect our climate. They bring in uh, weather changes, climate change. And uh, people are blaming what we see in a short-term scale on CO2. And part of my uh, research has been to look at CO2 and CO2 cycling and CO2 uh, exchanges between the atmosphere and the biosphere and increasing CO2. Is it a climate forcer? And we find no evidence in the geological record and in the, the historical record that changes in CO2 concentrations are affecting temperature or climate. Depends on the time scale. We find very strong correlations between CO2 and warming. <clears throat> the interesting point though is that the warming starts first. So warming drives CO2 and that's because CO2 in the atmosphere is part of a much larger cycle which involves the biosphere, which in involves the shallow oceans, the dissolved inorganic carbon in the oceans. And these exchanges are driven by temperature. Temperature in water, soil moisture. But temperature is a driving force. So the, warm, the warmer the planet, the more CO2 is exchanged and the more CO2 we're going to have in the atmosphere. So it's a consequence of warming. We've seen this during the ice ages. We see this on decadal scale in uh, the modern record. It's a greenhouse gas. It absorbs long wave radiation, but over a very narrow bandwidth. And because it's at a very low concentration in the atmosphere compared to other gases, notably water vapor, it has a minimal effect, imperceptible effect. So if we want to use CO2 as a climate driver, we being the, the climate alarmist community, I should say, the modeling community, they have to amplify that minor effect of CO2 with water vapor. And uh, because it's a non-condensable gas, water vapor is a condensable gas, which makes it a very complicated greenhouse gas. But CO2 is always there, so we can maybe raise the uh, water vapor content because of that minimal CO2 absorption, that minimal CO2 warming, and therefore we can actually have measurable, quantifiable global warming, and then predict it out into the future. The problem is that that sensitivity factor, the climate sensitivity to CO2, has never really been demonstrated. And we don't see it in the past. So all of our climate records, whether it's from uh, ocean sediment proxies, ice core proxies of temperature and CO2, we don't see those correlations where CO2 is driving temperature. Mm -hmm.